Um, so as we go through, there will be a chance at the end to ask any questions that you might want to ask, okay? But I want to just sort of show you what we're dealing with. Now, a couple of um, safety things first off. I know Miss Goff's spoken to you about it, but I mean, we can already see fogging up's happening with masks on. So you can leave your glasses off for now. You don't need them on while I'm demoing it. But while you're dissecting, take your face masks either down to your chin or take them off, okay? Solely because we don't want you cutting yourself. You can't use a scalpel safely if you can't see where it's going, okay? So you'll get four pieces of equipment in this. You will get a scalpel, very sharp, and I'll go through our use of that in a bit, all right? You'll find a pair of um, surgical scissors, some forceps or tweezers, and then you will also have our little probe. They're mostly for helping you sort of explore the heart Okay, holding pieces back so you're not putting your fingers in the way while you're doing um, cuts. The way I'm going to show you how to do this, if you like follow the instructions to the T, there's no safety issues in this, really. Okay, so just be smart and listen to the instructions. Um, the scalpel, what you will notice, there is a flat side and there is a curved side. Okay, the curved side's the sharp side. So you don't want to touch that. You also don't want to touch the pointy end. So whenever you're cutting with a scalpel, this is a technique I want you to have. Sort of in between your thumb and middle finger and your index finger along the flat side of that blade. Okay? That's going to give you complete control over this. All right? It's going to allow you to do nice, neat, controlled incisions, and it's all good. Okay? So whenever you pick it up, look at it before you go touching it. Don't pick it up and go, okay, boom. Pick it up, look at it, make sure you've got the flat side towards your index finger and then finger along it. And when you're cutting, it's always with your finger and nice short cuts. We're not holding it back here and pretending we're eating a steak at home and just hacking at it, okay? It's all about control and precision. All right. You will then get your heart. So this is a sheep's heart, all right? Now... Don't get too freaked out about it. Who's ever, like, touched a steak? Okay, it's pretty much the same as touching a steak that's come out of the fridge, okay? It's, it's just muscle. It's cardiac muscle. It's slightly different to the muscle in your, um, in your you know, limbs, but it's just muscle, okay, with a bit of fat and some sinew and stuff like that thrown in. Um, so when you touch it, just, you know, one of the other things is when you're touching it and um, cutting it at the same time, do it with confidence, Okay. Don't sort of do the whole dead fish approach where you're like, eh, all right? You want to actually pick it up, move it around, all right? Touch it, okay? It's just a piece of meat. All right, first thing we want to do is figure out what side is our left and our right side. So there's two ways of doing it. One's by feel and one's by just looking at it. So the feel way is by actually feeling the walls, okay? The right side of your heart has thinner walls than the left. And the reason is that the left side, sorry, the right side only has to pump it to the lungs, which are right near the heart, and you'll see that when we do a pluck. The left side has to pump it out to the whole body, so it needs more muscle on that side. So when you pick it up, have a feel of it. You'll be able to feel just by the fact that you can fold one side, okay? That's going to be the right side of the heart, okay? So if we were looking at that inside of a chest, that's your right, that's your left. The other way is through this line, okay? So that line is your septum. That separates your left and right sides. And if you've got the septum running from top right to bottom left, you've got it in the right position, okay? So that's how you want it sitting on your chopping board. Once you've got it in this position, you're going to make two incisions. So if you're working in pairs, it'd be cool to see you actually each do one, all right? Okay, so get the chopping board, nice and close to you, and we're going to be basically following or running parallel to that septum through the muscular right side and the muscular left side. Okay, we don't want to go too hard and too fast. All right. The other thing we want to make sure is that our other hand is clear but holding what we're cutting. So when I'm cutting, I'm going to have my thumb and my index finger sort of separated by about five, six centimetres. And in between those, 
I'm going to make my incisions. Now, just have a look at ease how easily this is going to go through the tissue. All right. That went through that with very little pressure. You don't have to put heaps of pressure on it. Let the blade do the work for you. Okay. So that has opened up, and I'm just going to bring it down to that next little part here. Notice how far away I'm keeping my fingers from it. That's going to open it up. All right. Now, you'll be able to get your fingers, your probes into it to have a bit of an explore. What you will find attached to them, hopefully, is if I go in through here, I should be able to find a blood vessel coming out. There. All right. So that is your pulmonary artery. Okay, that's the one going to the lungs. You won't find your whole atriums on here. This is actually the tissue for the atriums. Okay, so your atriums have been cut off. So you won't find your vena cava and you won't find your pulmonary veins coming back in. All right. But from this side, if we go through and we do our cut as well. Okay, so notice I've just sort of rotated it around a bit so I've got nice clean access to it. Fingers apart and we're going to go through. Now, once you've cut it, you'll automatically notice a difference in thickness. See how thin that wall is, as opposed to that? Think about what the side of the heart does. Pumps to the lungs, pumps to the body. The lungs are nice and close to the heart, the body's got to get out to your toes and things. Okay, so it's got a much thicker wall. And again, by exploring it, what you should be able to find is your aorta. So get in and have a play. If you don't want to do it with your fingers, that's why we give you this bad boy. You can get that one up in there and just go for a bit of a play. So here I've gone back up into my atrium, and if I wiggle it around right, I can go out through my aorta. Same on this side, I can come up through... Where are you? I can see you there, through the atrium, or out through the pulmonary artery. Okay, so have a bit of a cut of uh, around it. Once you've got it to this stage, and you've had a bit of a look around, Extend these cuts up nice and carefully to the top. Now, this is where you're going to start to open it up a little bit, okay? And you'll start to notice here that you've got some sort of like parachute strings, okay? They're actually the strings that are connected to your valves, okay? And you've got these on both the left and right side. So you can open up both sides and have a bit of a look and a bit of a play with the um, parachute strings. You may notice, if you're lucky, you might get some little blood clots and things in there. Right. This one doesn't have any. Oh, blood clots are fun. All right. So just have a bit of an explore. Once you've opened up both sides, then here's where a challenge is. I'm going to butterfly this. All right. I'm going to open it up so you can see the complete structure. So you've got to be, if you do it too deep, it's not going to work. You want to sort of come around, turn it on its side, and figure out where sort of the halfway mark is and go a little bit above it. And we're going to run, so keeping my fingers well out the way, I'm going to run a line down to the point of my heart. Okay, and I'm going to continue that the whole way through into there. All right. I'm then going to turn it around and do the same. So from where the point is, and I've made my incision, back up to the top. Again, I'm not applying any pressure here, guys, to the knife. Okay, maybe one more. Okay, now, once we've got it to this point, I'm going to come up through this centre wall, which is probably the thickest part. Okay, so I'm going to carefully... Get my first cut, and then I'm going to bring it up. Making sure I cut any little tendons. And I'll get to the top. And that is your heart. You'll be able to open it up, have a look at your valves and everything like that. Okay? And that'll give you a good idea as well about the difference in thickness in your walls. Okay? And you'll be able to get a couple of cool diagrams. So if you're looking at it, that's the front. That's the top. That's what it looks like inside. Okay? And if you think about that, it's really just like a piece of steak. Okay? It's just a piece of meat. That's the way to approach it. Okay? Cool. 
Okay, so once you're done and you've been allowed to do what you're allowed to do, I don't know what they're going to tell you you're allowed to do with yours, um, there's a little bit of a pack up. So on each bench, you will have that. All of your utensils, whether you've used them or not, are going to go in pointy end down. Okay, that's crucial. We don't want the lab techs reaching in here and someone's put the, the scalpel the wrong way up. Okay, pointy end down on everything. With these, there's certain ways that you can do it. Okay, personally me, I get the bottom of the newspaper, bring it out. I go inside. I get my chopping board and I slide it out. Pop that over to the side. Heart on heart. And then, sort of like a subway, <laughs> roll it up. Now, here's where the cool part is. You put one hand this end, bring your glove down over it. Get your other glove, bring that down. And there's your heart in a nice little package to go into that. Okay, so pack up's fairly straightforward. 